Well, good morning once again, everybody. And we are beginning a new series today on the Bible. It's called It, it Is Written. And I'm really excited about that for several different reasons. Uh, the major reason is I believe it brings us life, not just me. But I really want to encourage you to really make it your priority to, uh, to come to this series. It's very important. I, I, out of all the things we do here at Cornerstone Church, uh, next to knowing Jesus Christ, reading the Bible, understanding the Bible, and praying, and being in community is so important. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, there is, a, there, is a, there is a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of understanding about the Bible. People are afraid of the Bible. But I'm going to tell you, it is absolutely supernatural. It will change your life and my life. I'm guar I guarantee it. And so what we're really trying to do is help us to get to the place. This, this is our vision and our hope and our prayer. That not only you come to know God, but you would begin to, to read the Word of God. And during the week, you would actually get revelation from God. And that you would pray. And that you would have fellowship. And that you'd come back here on Sunday with a song in your heart. A melody in your heart. And that you would be able to share with each other what God is doing throughout your week. Rather than just coming to Sunday morning and thinking, I just got to get through another week. You see, God has, has given His Word to be life to us. I really want to encourage you with that. I want to start off with a, with a story today. A true story. Uh, we serve, um, we have a bunch of missionaries we support. And... Uh, one of the missionaries we support is Don Butera, who's from India, uh, India, I'm sorry, Indonesia. And uh, he tells a story, and he comes, he visits us. He's been over, for, over there for 10 years now. And, and Indonesia is the number one Muslim country in the world as far as population is concerned. And we're going out, and he's told me all these stories, what's going on. He talks about all these incredible things happening, that there would be um, a man in a mosque praying to Allah, and he sees a vision of Jesus. And he's telling me four or five stories of this, and he's like, he's getting agitated. I'm like, why? And I said, I said, Don, why are you getting agitated? That's fantastic. People are seeing Jesus in vision. He says, no, it's not right. I'm like, what? He said, that's our job. We're not doing our job, so Jesus has to come down. And I, I sat there, I'm like, really? And I was amazed by that, and, but he's got a point. Jesus sends us, and, and I, just this morning I read another story, and I want to read it with you, share it with you. It said, Jesus appeared to a Middle Eastern Muslim every night, recited the Gospel of John, God is moving. And a church planner working in the Middle East has shared in miraculous ways the Gospel is moving across a persecuted region, all right, including how Jesus appeared to a Muslim man every night for weeks reciting to him the entire Gospel of John. A part of the Gospel Coalition, Something Needs to Change event, held Wednesday night. David Platt, who, by the way, he is a solid biblical believer. He's not some loon, okay? Um, author and pastor of McLean Bible Church, held an interview with a missionary identified as Yasm. He lives and works in part of the Middle East where not only is it illegal to share the Gospel, it is life-threatening to talk about how the gospel is advancing, Platt said. Speaking via um, simulcast, video simulcast, with a disguised voice, Yasin began stating that God is moving inside the Middle East with dreams, visions, and personal visitation. He shared the story of a man who lived about 50 kilometers outside an unnamed Middle East um, city known for vast um, Islam. The man said to us, when we visited him, a man wearing all white knocked at my door. Every night, I couldn't look at him because his face was so shiny and bright, Yasm recalled. When he would come inside, he asked me to write down what he said. As I wrote, I fell asleep. The next night, he would come again for the next month. Yasm asked the man, what did you write? May I see what he wrote? The man showed Yasm and his notebook and it was written, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. And the same was the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, nothing that was made was made. The opening portion of the New Testament book of John. The amazing thing is, he never heard or saw the Bible before. He had the whole book of John verbatim in his notebook, Yasin Revealed. Jesus visited him every night until he finished the book. The amazing thing is the man actually asked us, who was this man who visited me. Now you might be thinking, yeah, pfft, yeah, I don't believe that. Well, I, I wouldn't believe it normally either. 
except I've heard stories after stories after stories from people I know personally. One of the things is Dustin Sunset, one of the missionaries we support, an amazing missionary. He right now is in Turkey. He was in Afghanistan, and he shares stories. He shared with my wife and I, and even shared here on a Sunday morning, how he actually, um, there was a man in a mosque praying and saw a vision of someone in white and said, next day someone's going to come to you. When I mean, we mean white, it's just such brilliance. Someone's going to come tomorrow and share to you the way of truth. And the next day he came, and the man gave his life to Christ. I mean, stuff like this is going on. Now, what does this have to do with today? It has everything to do with what's going on. It's very interesting. What did Jesus do? He gave him the word. Why did Jesus give him the word? The word is so important. I cannot overemphasize how important the word is. And there is an attack today upon the word. Now, we, and during Easter, we had, a, um, we had a survey asking you what was important to you, different topics. And as I was praying about it, about different topics, what does God say about this? What does God say about that? I feel like the Lord said, forget all that. Go back to my word. Because who cares what my opinion is? What does the word of God say? We actually believe it's the word of God. It's our standard of operation. And how we make decisions is not the cultural trends. It's not the political polls. It's not what's popular in social media or what's popular on the college campuses and university campuses or even the church campuses, we actually believe the word of God, the Bible says the grass wither and the flower fade up, but the word of the Lord lasts forever. We believe the word of God is what we're supposed to do. So when someone asks me a question, what do you think about such and such? I say this to him. Let me ask you a question first. Yes? What do you believe about the Bible? Oh, the Bible. It's a nice book. Uh, there's some good stuff in it, but man, it's dangerous. If you, if you do what the Bible says, you'll become a terrorist. If you do what the Bible says, you'll be a hate monger. The Bible is full of, of um, patriarchal mas masculism. What it does is it represses women around the world. It, it, it was made by Constantine in 300 AD. He basically shaped society to what he wanted to do, and they put the Bible together to control humanity. Yeah, there's some good stuff in it, good things we can take, but man, you can take it seriously, you're in trouble. So what you got to do is pick out the parts that are good and we can learn from. Just like you take parts from the Quran, and you can look into Buddhism and all these other religions, and just take what you want from it and come up with what you think is important. And that's the prevailing quote unquote, wisdom of today. And if you believe in the Bible, you're a hate monger because you are against humanity and you're narrow-minded and you're in the dark ages. And there's a view of that today. And if someone would ask you, you believe in the Bible? Yeah, why? Didn't man write it? And we're like, I don't know what to say. The good news is, I have good news for you, in, in, during, during this series, we're going to look at it and you're going to be amazed because you're going to find it takes more faith to believe the Bible is not a book inspired by God, then, then there is not. I'm telling you. But today, I, I just, as I was preparing this morning, uh, I, I don't like to say this. It sounds like I'm trying to brag. I'm not trying to brag, but I really believe the Lord said, scrap your message and change it to this. I really believe that I, I was inspired this morning to do that. And, and so I'm being obedient to that. And so what I'm sharing today is a precursor to our series because it's so important. i got to get this out. This is so important, it's, it's monumental. And it's this, the most powerful source in the universe, in every realm, is the Word of God. Now, we're going to unpack that for a few moments, and we're going to look at the Word of God, how important the Word of God is. It's not just a book of good sayings. It's not just something that you do, would do well. No, we actually believe it is literally the Word of God. How can it possibly be the Word of God? How is this the Bible, the Word of God? You saying God dictated this whole thing, is, like you said about that vision? Is that what you're saying? We're going to get into that, okay? But it's the most, it's inspired by the word of Lord, but it's supernatural. The Bible is supernatural, and from Genesis to Revelation, it really is. And we're going to show you this. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. From Genesis to the very end, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ is virtually in every area of the Bible we're going to look at today. So first of all, the most powerful source in the universe, in every realm, is the Word of God. God holds everything together. It's the Word of God. What's the Word of God? Well, let's look at what the Bible has to say. John chapter 1, verse 1. Incidentally, uh, 
Oh, I mentioned uh, Yazin who had that vision of Jesus. You know, my father had a vision of Jesus when he was 16 years old. Seriously. He literally had Jesus show up and felt Jesus hand on and spoke to him. David, I love you. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My dad had no idea. What's the Lamb's Book of Life? Until he found out what it was. And my dad is now 84 years old. He's never had, sorry dad, he never had another experience like that. And so when I hear these stories from credible sources, I know God speaks today. And he's, he, wants to, he wants people to come to know him. And guess what his major source is for doing that? Me and you. He chooses to utilize us to spread the news. But we have to have that news change us. So, in the beginning was the word. When is the beginning? My, my children, all my children ask me this question. It must be, it, it's something inside of us. Dad, who created God? Every child has asked that. Luke especially, Hannah and Matthew. Well, Dad, who created God? There must be someone who created God. And I tell them, no, God always was. And he is. And he is to come. That there has to be a beginning source. There has to be a source that makes it all happen or nothing would happen. That he has to be the prime mover of all of everything in creation. So, in the beginning, the beginning, Alpha and Omega, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, not only is it an immaterial thing, it's not. It's literally the personality of God. In the beginning was God. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, look at Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created, and he spoke and said, let there be. It was the word that brought the entire creation alive. Now, I want you to track with me here as we go through this. In the beginning, back to 1 John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word, and the logos, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It says, was the word was God. The Jehovah's Witness falsely Take the Greek and put A in there. It says A God. No, no. He is God. Not a God. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word is God. Now listen as we continue to, to move on. He was in the beginning with God. Who? Jesus. He was in the beginning with God. What does it say in the book of Genesis? Let us make man in our image. You can even see it there. You can see that there is a collective of God's consciousness. Oh, it sounds so new age. That sounds good. Collective consciousness of God. Maybe we should change the name of the church. Wouldn't that be kind of good? <laughs> Where do you go? Oh, I go to the collective consciousness of God. <laughs> I like that. Okay. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, not anything that was made was made. So now this is the amazing part. There is something in all creation that makes it come alive. Scientists can't figure it out. They call it the God particle. They can't even measure it. it we get the subatomic particles and they find something smaller. And, and they even, uh, even had a thing called, they called dark matter, which we went to Hayden Planetarium. It was fantastic. And they had a series called Dark Matter. And they showed the universe and showed that the universe was expanding. But they, there was this thing holding it all together. That's what they said. It's, there's something holding it all together. We call it dark matter. They call it dark matter because they don't know what the matter is. It's, they don't understand. There's something holds it all together. You know what that is? Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Now, what's so amazing is science does not contradict the Bible, but science sometimes gets it wrong, and they change it later on. But what science is ultimately saying is the universe is expanding, and guess what? The universe is expanding. God said, let there be, and there was. Just like well, my children are expanding, and I'm expanding from those donors last week. But my kids are growing, right? God spoke them in existence, and they're growing. They have a word. They have the word of Jesus. In fact, every single person in this room, in the world, has the word of God in them to one degree or another, or they wouldn't be alive. The problem is there's something broken in there where they're not communing with God. But it's very God himself that gives you the ability to breathe. So he was in the beginning with God. 
All things were made through him. So everything, in fact, this table has God in it. Now, I know it sounds like George Lucas theology again, right? I know it sounds that way, and, uh, you know, I can touch a tree. Ooh, I feel the energy of the tree. Now, this is the truth. The greatest lie has the greatest amount of truth. And a lot of religions and New Age movement and spiritualism and Satanism and white witches and the whole nine yards, and by the way, it really does exist, they say, tap into the energy source. And they're right. There is an energy source. It's the presence of God. It, God's energy source, if you will, his signature, his let there be, goes into action and makes it happen. It, it, it's, it's his word that I'm able to stand on the stage because the molecular structure is together. The moment God's taken out, it all falls apart. So there is God, is there. But there's something broken in humanity that they're not getting it. So he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, not anything was made that was made. Colossians 1.16, fascinating. For by him, that's Jesus, all things were created. Okay? It, it, to me, it blows me away how science is now saying there's something that holds it all together. They literally say that. And what does the Bible say? Christ holds it all together. And without Christ in it, holding it together by his word, what happens? Chaos begins to happen, and then it, it destroys itself. You pull the word of God out of your life, you will have disorder. Disorder leads to chaos. Chaos leads to anarchy. And anarchy has to be governed by a dictator. When you pull God out of our culture... There begins to have disorder. We do not see it happening, right? There's disorder. There's chaos, people going to school, shooting people up. There's anarchy. Every man does what's right in his own eye. And there has to be a dictator, lest there's anarchy. A democracy only works where there is morality. And what's happening is we are denying the very sustenance of who we are in everything. Not only is there a molecular structure, not only is there a scientific constant, but there is laws of human behavior that are like science. You violate and you hurt. Now, the beautiful thing is, God does not just want us to gather these, these thoughts and information. He wants to have a relationship. And I'll say this. Without the word, of, without a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Bible is toxic. Christianity is dangerous without Jesus. This is why we see such horrible tragedies if you mankind through the crusades and other things. When you pull God out, you pull Jesus out of the word, it's toxic. When you pull Jesus out of a church, it's toxic. Scripture without relationship does not work. It does not work. It works in relationship. There has to be the two put together. Ever when you were a kid, maybe you did this, I did it. You took a little baking soda and a little, make it a fake volcano. We've all done it, right? The paper mache fake volcano. Put a little uh, red food dye. And what you do is you put vinegar with, with, with the uh, baking soda, right? Well, in the same way, the word of God without, without Jesus does not work. It's just dead. It's powder. But you put the two together, there's a combination that takes place. I'm telling you right now, this is huge. And, and I know this is a lot of theory, but this theory is not theory. This is the truth, because the Bible says it. And, and the science is even starting to say it. By the way, there's no conflict between science and the Bible. There should not be. Theology is a study of how God works with humanity. Science is how God made stuff. We try to figure it out. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we change it. So don't be afraid of science. Because the more you look into science, the more you know there's God. Okay? So for by him all things were created in heavens and earth, visible and invisible, whether, listen to this, thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Now we're talking about not only the physical world, not only, not only the biological world, but the spiritual world. There is everything you see was created. And they're telling us about different realms out there, and there's different realities out there. And God created them all, and what holds it all together is Jesus Christ. And I tell you the same thing. What holds your life together and my life together is the Word of God. Without the Word of God, you will fall into disorder. Disorder leads to chaos. Chaos leads to anarchy and destruction. I'm telling you, it's the word of God that holds us in relationship with Christ. So, all things were created through him and 
for him. What does that mean? If you don't live for him, you're in disorder. Well, that sounds egotistical. Are you telling me God made me for him? Yep. I don't like that. It's just the way it is, everybody. Think about it. God made us because he loves us. He wants relationship with us. And if we're not rightly related to God, there is a disorder in us. The word of God can't get through us. It causes disorder. All right, let's continue to look forward to the scriptures. It says this. And he, this Jesus, is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. Now, when the Bible says all things hold together, it means... Okay, what will hold your marriage together? It's not a trick question. Jesus, what will hold your physical life together? What holds your finances together? What holds our country together? It really does. So, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. This is why Matthew 6, 33 works. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Why? You put Christ first. You put him in the middle of your life. It order comes. Instead of worrying about this huge list, you get Christ in the order, and the order comes to you. It's the word of God. Now, and he is the head of the body, the church. Guess what the church is? You and I. Who's the head? Christ. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that everything he might be preeminent. If Christ is not preeminent in our church, if Christ is not the center of what we do and who we live for, we're wasting our time. And the truth is, is that Jesus came to us, the creator came down to us to create, for us to have an interface. Our interface with God is Jesus Christ. You know what an interface is. Without the face of Jesus, there's no interface with God. Jesus is God, but he is that he came and he makes the word come alive and gives us relationship with God. He is the, we'll get into it in a few moments. Okay, here we go. The earth, listen to Genesis 1, verses 2 through 3. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was, was over the face of the deep. Now, let me just stop there for a moment. So here we have in Genesis that the earth was without form and, and darkness. So the earth had some kind of form. What happened prior to this verse? Was there a meteorite that hit it and destroyed the earth? I don't know. Was there some kind of cataclysmic battle in that? I don't know. But the Bible says there's disorder. So we got to be very careful when we talk about science in the Bible that we are dogmatic of what the Bible says. The things the Bible does not say, just hold a little re reserve there, right? But the earth was without form and void. And uh, Pastor, are you young earth or new earth? Come next week and I'll tell you. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. Maybe some of you feel that way. You feel formless and void. I don't know what my life is going. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just living. I'm just living the part. I go to, I get up, go to work, come home, get up, go to work, go home, have a couple of days off, go up, go to work, go home, go have Christmas, have Thanksgiving, go up, go to work, come home, and one day I'll go home, in Florida, and then I'll really go home. <laughs> and is it, I mean, it's like we're in this. It's like it's void. I'm, why am I living for? What? Why am I alive? Right? Earth, or maybe you feel a void. Maybe you feel a wholeness. You don't feel very whole. You feel a hole in your life. The earth was formless and void. And what? And the Spirit of God was hovering. I believe God's Spirit is hovering over the earth right now with all the chaos. And the way the Word of God comes to the planet is through you and I and the Holy Spirit. So, in the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Let there be light. And so, my friends, what we're praying for is that the light of Christ would illuminate our lives, your life, and my life. It says in, in 1 John 1, 1 through 5, in him was Zoe, which is life. And the life was what? Light of men. What does it say here in John uh, Genesis chapter 1? God said, let there be what? Light. Okay. In him was life, and the life was the what? Light of men. 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how difficult times get, understand this. The light of Christ in you is greater than the greatest darkness. And so you don't have to fear the darkness. What we have to do is let the light shine in us. And like, you know, what is, how do we do this? You're talking about theory, and this is confusing me. I don't understand. Well, listen, this is the issue. What we need to do is get God's Word in us. And his word to control us. And his word to saturate us. How do we do that? By doing what it says. Okay. The most powerful source in the universe and every realm is the word of God. And this contains and is the word of God. And we're going to look at it in the next coming weeks. We're going to talk about how do you know this is the word of God. We'll get into that, okay? That's next week and the week after, or probably next week. Second point I want to bring to you today is this. Jesus is the word and the foundation of all things. It's all about Jesus. Why is it that everyone's fine with you saying, God bless you, God loves you? The moment you mention Jesus, there's a problem. Why? Because it's true. Because the enemies are scared of the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. He is the word incarnate. He's the one that comes to flesh, okay? Jesus is the word and the foundation of all things. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what Jesus did. He became flesh and dwelt among us. What happened is Mary received the word. Mary, the mother of Christ, received the word. And what happened to that word is it impregnated her and the word became flesh and was born to the planet. In the same way, God wants his word to get into you where the Spirit of God and His Word come together and the Word comes alive in you, where now the order of the God and the love of God and the relationship of God changes your outside, changes every characteristic of you from your molecular structure to your relationships. What? Yes. It's the love of God. It's God. Listen, if we understand that, the Bible says my people uh, suffer because of lack of knowledge. We have to understand that the soul sufficiency of Jesus Christ and receiving from him, receiving his presence and saying, God, I, I submit to your word and every part of it. When you begin to do that, things come into order. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. I don't know if you know the story, the parable Jesus talks about. Everyone who hears these words and puts them to practice, what happens? It's a foundation. Who holds it all together? Jesus. Who holds your marriage together? Jesus. Who holds your health together? Jesus. Who holds your relationships together? Jesus. Who holds your finances together? Jesus. Who holds your life together? Jesus. When we understand that, and we say, Lord Jesus, I, I receive your lordship right now over my body, over my mind. I submit to your word because your word is life. Come, Holy Spirit. Life, life. Um, Word of God, touch me. There's something powerful about it. And so what happens is, when you and I get into the Word, I've, I've read through this thing, I'm not trying to brag, or, for the last 15 years, I've been reading through it every single year, and I'm amazed. I call, I'll read a passage and get something I never saw before. And all of a sudden, it's just like, I, I don't think I'm the only one, it's like something's birthed in here, and I read it, it's like my spirit is being, is being filled and, and something comes out of me, and it, it changes me. It's the Word of God. It's powerful. Everyone puts them into practice. It's like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. Now, what happens to the person that only hears the Word and does not do it? Everything will fall apart when the storms come. Guys, guess what? Storms are going to come. If you're not in a storm, you will hit a storm. Or you're coming out of a storm. Storms always come. Are you solid on Christ? You see, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says this. For the word of God is living and act. It's a living culture. It literally is like almost like a vaccination. Well, vaccination is dead. 
I'll, I'll, let, me get out of the, let me get out of the medical field before I mess myself up. There's a couple of doctors here. <laughs> I'm going to stop. All right. For the word, let's say it's a living culture. How's that? Okay. For the word of God is lit. I heard someone say, mm, he's wrong about that one. Okay, I'm sorry. For the word of God is living and it's active. It's living and it's active. It's not some dead material. But please understand, when you put the spirit of God in this word, it comes alive. Apart from the spirit of God through Jesus Christ, it becomes death. And it becomes legalism, and it overwhelms you. It doesn't work. There has to be a combination. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the divisions of soul and spirit. I mean, the Bible gets into the very makeup of who we are. There's a soul, which is our mind, will, and our emotions, and there's a spirit. And every single person has the spirit of God in them that's broken. And the only way to fix it is to invite Jesus in your life through the Holy Spirit, connects you to God again, and Christ is the bridge. And, and so, so the Word of God is active, sharpening any two-yard sword, piercing the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and, dis and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Uh, we, we actually believe this. We've seen people healed of cancer. I can't control it. We pray. We ask God. I see it happen. Or I believe God's virtue. We have, I have a friend of mine that had metal in his back. I'm not making this up. He had metal in his back from an injury. He got prayed for, and the metal disappeared. He got healed. I, I've seen the glory of God show up where I actually saw the glory of God. What? That's next week. Okay. But let me, let me get the point. All those things point back to Jesus, not those things. What I see has happened is this cool stuff happens. And the church goes, oh, let's go after the glory cloud. Let's go after this. And they leave, Jesus they leave Jesus alone. Please understand, these signs and wonders all point to Jesus. If these experiences are not pointing to Jesus, it become a tool of the enemy to get us off track. I'm not just saying this. To, I'm telling you, this stuff's real. Jesus is real. So it's active, sharper, piercing between joints and marrow, and discerning of thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no, create, no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who we must give an account. So, as we conclude our time here today, I, I just wanted to, to reiterate a couple things. That it's the word of God that created the universe. It's the spirit of Christ that holds it all together. It's the spirit of Christ that will hold you together. And if, I'm telling you right now, it will hold every aspect of your life. And the fact that you're alive right now is the very grace of God Almighty. And he's giving you an opportunity to connect to him. Because there's this order. That disorder leads to chaos. The chaos leads to anarchy. And eventually, destruction. And Jesus has come to stop the chaos, stop the disorder, and bring order of his love, of his grace. And the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. My friends, if we will get the word with relationship to the Father, through the Son, through the Holy Spirit, watch what God will do. I am convinced of that. And I really want to encourage everybody, this is not some um, un un unintelligible thing. Now, the Bible is, is, is very easy to understand in some parts, difficult in others, but I'm telling you right now, it would transform form your life you need the word and the word without jesus is not the word and jesus without the word is not jesus let me say that again that's pretty good <laughs> the word without jesus is not the true word and jesus without the word is not the word you need both because jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And this contains the words of God. It's the word of God. It's his command. It's his order. I'm telling you, it goes across every... It, it, the word of God goes beyond time, space. It goes beyond my life, your life. It goes beyond anything that we can do. But when we say the word and we worship the word, which is Christ, 
We enter a place of eternity right here on earth where we can be with Christ in heavenly places and here at the same time. I, I don't understand. Well, well, let me explain something here to you. What it is is your identity is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. It's what brings order to disorder. And God loves us so much, he wants us to be in order with him because there is a great disorder. And because there's a great disorder, Christ came to kill the disorder and bring order so you could have a relationship with him to the Father. So you would not have to suffer and be in disorder and enter a place called hell. The ultimate disorder is hell. And we can see it happening right now on earth because the word of the Lord is being stripped away in our very culture. Maybe it is in your life. Let me ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, I know that today, God, it's, it can be a little complicated what we're talking about. But Lord, we recognize this this morning. That you are the word, Jesus. You hold it all together. Both the created world, the seen and unseen world. And it gets so personal, Lord. You hold us together. Father, you, you see the person right now that feels like they can't even barely survive because of depression and anxiety. They're like, God, where's the order? in my life where are you God where are you in my life I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life the life's passing me by what do you want me to do God and there seems to be disorder in all everything we see about and around us but Lord you said peace and you said be still and know that I am God and Father I pray right now spirit of the living God Lord Jesus let your word come right now let your word come and dwell on us right now. You are the word. You are the life. And you bring order in Jesus' name. If you've never given your life to Jesus, today is the day to do it. Maybe you used to walk with God and you turned away. Maybe you've never received Jesus. You believe in him. Jesus said very clearly, he who hears my word and does not put him to practice is like the foolish man. Just because you believe in Jesus, that's not good enough. What you do, you have to accept Him as your Lord and your Savior. If you do that today, today you can be in a place in communion with your Creator through Jesus Christ, who is God, the Son of God. And so if you would like to give your life to Christ for the very first time, I'm going to ask you just to put your hands up if you could, so I know how to better pray. Or if you want to give your life back to God. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else this morning? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else this morning? It's okay. Let's, let's pray this prayer together in our hearts. It's, it's the prayer in our hearts. Lord Jesus, I believe you are God. I believe you died on the cross to pay for my brokenness and sins. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of all the things I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. And I choose turn away from my know is wrong come and fill me now Jesus come in my heart I invite you your word to come in my heart today and with your help I choose to walk with you in Jesus name Amen.